and I want to start by asking you are we likely to get a pill or a vaccine that can actually reverse aging in our lifetime when i say lifetime i mean mean the next 20 to 30 years certainly hope so um i don't have a crystal ball but uh, we are working here in boston on taking this reprogramming technology the one that i showed for today for the eye and in the next 2 years we hope to treat the first patient with glaucoma to see if we can restore vision and so yeah i mean that that's just one example of at least 20 companies that are working on medicines uh that should if it all works out slow and perhaps even reverse aging so if it doesn't happen in the next 30 years something must have gone terribly wrong right at this epigenetic programming that you talked about how often can it be done can it just be done once in your lifetime or can you do it repeatedly yeah that that's the big question that we're working on we've only done it once uh but maybe you can do it 10 times maybe 100 this is a really interesting question i i think that we can do it multiple times there's no reason why i could think that it couldn't be done repeatedly so just you know imagine with me for a second that we could find a pill or a gene therapy a virus that would do what we did to the mouse's eye but throughout the whole body and uh, we've engineered this already to be turned on with a pill we use a molecule in those mice called doxycycline which is just an anti antibiotic um it's not the fact that it's an antibiotic that's important it's just a molecule that we can give to the mice as as a drink and uh it turns on the genes so you one day maybe you go to your doctor you have an injection and you get a pill for 3 weeks you get rejuvenated throughout your body you get better memory better eyesight better healing maybe even look better and then 10 years later you come back and have another course of that drug for 3 weeks but and then you just keep it going <laughs> right <laughs> So this epigenetic again resets can they be used to treat diseases other than glaucoma i mean what would you think what are the projections what is the potential yeah some other colleagues in in my field have shown that you can uh reverse aging in the brain mm -hmm. and uh, my lab is now working on this where we're actually growing little little brains in the lab you can grow mini brains now from cells from pe from people uh these these are reprogram cells we're not taking brains out of people but we we're actually now looking at reversing um the age of the brain perhaps we can treat alzheimers and dementias that way mm -hmm. um but we they've also shown internal organs can be reversed the the kidney uh the pancreas i mean ultimately uh any part of the body we think theoretically could be reversed even joints joint pain is a big problem and maybe we could get those joints to heal and regrow like young ones who wants to know what are the coolest most interesting anti-aging tools or technology or recent discoveries that are that are out there right now yeah well i'm excited about reprogramming to, to be able to reset the body which i you know obviously that's on the cutting edge but there's also other technologies which are exciting one is uh, the ability to turn to turn on the body's natural defenses against aging so there are the sirtuins that i work on uh, you kindly mentioned them earlier we have seven sirtuins in the body they're found in most of our cells and they need this molecule nad um so the ability to turn on those sirtuins is an exciting area uh resveratrol seems to do that nad boosters seem to do that so that's one area the other area are called senolytics these are drugs or molecules in development that delete kill off those senescent cells that i talked about earlier those zombie cells that accumulate and seem to contribute to aging and to cancer um so that's a super exciting relatively new area as well and then lastly a new area that's pretty exciting is to take drugs that are already available such as metformin and there's another one that's not as safe called rapamycin that's used for immune suppression that seems to do you know, wonderful things to to mice um and in looking at people also seem to have effects um on age slowing and even reversal 
So that's also promising. When, when you ask me how soon till we have a drug for aging, it's possible that we already have one or two available. We just need to have more evidence that they actually work the way we're hoping. They use a combination of drugs that can probably work together to address different aspects of aging. I have a question from Aman who says in your book, you state that there's no biological law that says we must age. What do you mean by that? I mean, all of us grew up, you know, being told aging is inevitable and we'll all grow old. So you're challenging that. Well, yeah, why should we uh, just say something's inevitable? A hundred years ago, dying from cancer was a, was inevitable if you if you had a tumor. There's very little you could do. And we decided we're going to fight against cancer and heart disease and Alzheimer's disease. So why is aging, which is the driver of most of these diseases, why is aging something that we should accept? Uh, it's the, the opposite because it's a common thing. And just because something's natural doesn't mean we should accept it. There's nothing about the natural world that we accept it, that we accept. You know, we've been, ever since we picked up a rock as a tool and lit a fire to cook food, we essentially have been changing the world around us and aging should be no exception. Now, I agree with you that that aging is going to happen. We're not going to live forever, but can we and should we try to live another five or 10 or 20 years longer healthily? Absolutely. The same way we did this for lifespan in the 20th century. Um, how long could we live? Well, there, there are species on our planet that live for thousands of years. There are even mammals, whales that can live hundreds of years. So it's doable. There's no law that says that we couldn't live longer. And we're finally being understand, being able to understand how these other animals are able to live so much longer than we can. It's like what you said earlier, it's not just about living longer, it's also about living a healthy life because increasingly we have several studies that have shown that though people are living longer, uh, they are disabled and it's not healthy life that they are spending the additional 20 to 30 years.